There. After taking the car for a 300 km spin to Kubu Island, I decided it would be a good idea to go to a place called Kama Rhino Sanctuary. Welcome to Kama Rhino Sanctuary. By the way, if you missed the first episode of this adventure, you can click on the link to start at the beginning and come back to this after. I recommend that to get the full story. If you want to see rhinos and you are in Africa, Kama Rhino Sanctuary is the place you should visit. You are almost guaranteed to see them, either at Malema Pan coming in at dusk to drink, or sneaking up on you close to the bird hide. Which is also a very good spot for bird watching, antelopes and the odd giraffe. I had already had a few chats with staff members Nyams and Sydney. Nyams is the head of conservation and Sydney is the manager at Kama. They are both passionate about conservation and the role Kama has as a strategy to protect and breed black and white rhinos. Both of them sensed my enthusiasm about rhinos and photography and invited me on an evening bushwalk, hopefully to get a closer look at the animals. We got some really good ones, but it's getting dark now, so yeah, I just have to take this all in. <laughs> this incredible evening. The next morning they spoiled me again and took me out for a rhino tracking walk in the bush. Yes, we carry rifle, but not to shoot animals for protection. Just in case if they were to charge, we can just fire some warning shots. That sound will scare them. We saw some tracks on the other side. So we're thinking maybe if they are nearby, we must see them coming from the other side because actually the wind is blowing from the other side. So we don't want them to see us or to smell us, right? That's why I was checking the wind. Now we know the wind is actually blowing from the other side, going to the other side. If we're to find the rhinos, at least we have to be coming from this other side. Rhino tracking on foot is something you can do as an activity at Karma with professional guides. And you'll learn a lot about rhino behavior and hopefully get really close to the animals like we did. It's difficult to get good photos in the thickets of the bush as you have to be alert to the animals, but you should definitely try this if you plan to visit the sanctuary. That evening, I wanted to do a time-lapse by Malema Pan of the blood-red African sunset that very nearly resulted in the death of my brand new and very expensive camera. Luckily, the Panasonic scared him off. And just when I thought the coast was clear, this happened. Wait, there's, there's, four, there's five more coming in. My camera may die. Death by rhino. The camera seemed unharmed and I got to film five rhinos coming in to drink at sunset. I feel like I hit jackpot. That was more than I could ever hope for. What remained was to check the camera that had stood off Jack, one of the largest white rhino bulls at Kama. Okay, now we can, now we can check how, how close it got to my camera. But that was, that was, that was close. That yeah. was close, yeah. yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yams was laughing. <laughs> I told you. Yeah, imagine the strength from Hank, from uh, from Jack, you yeah. know, yeah. Uh, hitting the tripod. Now I'm sure the camera was going to just fly into that water hole. <laughs> <laughs> well, that buried itself in the mud. <laughs> that really made me nervous because I, I set up the camera first, and I didn't see the rhino coming in, and then oh, I was like, okay, now, now what happens happens. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then Jack, it was Jack, it right? Was Jack. Yeah, then Jack left and I saw five more rhinos coming in to drink. I was like, oh no, this is going to be the death of, of my very expensive Panasonic S1. But we'll see now. Well, let's see. There it is. There it is. <laughs> we'll find the tracks. 
see how close he got. Unfortunately, it's a windy afternoon. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, he got closer. He got closer. This is the tracks. Yeah. And this way he jumped up, you know, because this is a foreign object in his territory. Yes. And he looked at the lens and he could maybe see himself in the lens. And then he jumped up. He came again trying to, to hit it. But uh, unfortunately, he said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to take chances with this. This is just a stagnant object. Uh, I don't know what's the meaning of that. You know, then he went back, uh, he tried to, to, to look around uh, the water hole to try to inspect who came uh, to drink in his water hole. But then uh, he, he just went straight to the water hole and started drinking his water. And then after that, he started marking his territory again uh, at the banks of the water hole. Yeah, I saw him splashing urine. We have tracks. How close? Can we, can we try and find? Yeah, because they were blown by the wind. They came up to this point. Yeah, this so one of the tracks. Yeah. Maybe half, one meter from the camera. Yes, one meter from the camera, yes. It's alive. It's still alive. No worries. <laughs> this, that, was, that was a close encounter to the to the Panasonic, which is very dusty now. <laughs> and when I checked my camera later, I could not believe my luck. A tack sharp, full frontal photo of Jack the Rhino. Never a boring day at Kama. Kama Rhino Sanctuary is 8,500 hectares of Kalahari Sandvel between Orapa and Serove. They have a population of about 30 white rhinos and 4 of the more shy and smaller black rhinos. The sanctuary is heavily protected and patrolled by Botswana Defense Force, ensuring the safety of the animals. It is prime habitat for both black and white rhinos. Its mission and conservation strategy is to allow the animals to safely breed within its borders and eventually reintroduce them into their natural wild habitats. So far, the effort has relocated 16 rhinos to different parts of the country. By visiting Kama, you have a chance to support rhino conservation and help save the rhino population of the world. And I can highly recommend spending some time here. This is fantastic. I'm watching a rhino sharpen his horn on a, on a, on a tree or what used to be. No, it's a wooden pole actually. I had a great time and got loads of nice photos. And this is by far the best, taken by accident in a near accident while doing that time lapse. The time lapse was a fail. The image was not. But it was about time to get back on the road, head back to my own and resupply for the real mission, my lion photo project. In the next episode, I'll tell you all about it and we shall see how the first lion encounter goes. Will I get my first lion portrait? So like I said, in Africa, you just have to expect the unexpected. There is a lioness lying there. There is a big male lion. There is a big male lion lying right there. And I'm just going to wait. It is half past four. That means I've got two hours just waiting, getting my portrait the lions. Make sure to subscribe and ring that bell to stay up to date and join me in this African adventure. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode.